Okay guys, I just wanted to bring you a quick video on this um, new blocks LEA6H uh, GPS unit that I want to fit to my nose board so that I can do position hold and um, return to home. Uh, in addition, it gives you the ability to also have um, GPS coordinates and all the other on-screen um, paraphernalia such as um, velocity and uh, you know, altitude, well, GPS altitude um, on an on-screen display like a minimum OSD via, you know, um, aftermarket flash firmware such as the KV Team OSD stuff. Um, it kind of was a little bit dawning for me at the beginning when I was looking at all this because there, there seemed to be um, a little bit around flashing the unit and you have to use a device called an FTDI. Um, I haven't been through the procedure once it's actually not that bad so I thought what I'll do is I'll, I'll create this video so that everybody understands what's going on and sees it in action and, and sees how easy it is to really configure this um, device so to start with this is the LEA-6H that comes from you know, Hobby King, Hextronics and it has some solder pads here which in theory should work to provide power and ground and uh, receive and transmit uh, however, this one's faulty from Hobby King and the um, positive pad here doesn't work. However, on the other side we do have uh, the connection for the FTDI and I can actually use that to one do the programming and to also provide um, all my connectivity later to the NASE board uh, so that uh, it receives the GPS telemetry that it needs. Um, here is the U-Blox uh, GPS unit and of course on top here is the antenna that's required to receive the satellites and it's got a little um, battery here as well which helps keep um, you know, the satellite positions for uh, the next time that you, you fire it up and hopefully it's within the same geographic area so you'll get uh, satellite acquisition quite quickly but in short, you know, what we need to do is take this device and somehow put it onto a computer um, via some software called the uh, U-Box U-Center. Uh, the current version at the moment is uh, version 8 and I'll um, put a link as to where you can find that software and I'll show you in a minute how to use that to one, upload a updated configuration file and um, also get some satellite uh, even from within within your house up on your screen but as I said you've got to get the configuration into this unit uh, via this um, serial port here and what they do is they supply you with uh, a cable so I've taken this cable so it's um, just a full pin JST connector and I've wired it into what you call an FTDI and this is my FTDI I just bought it off eBay for three dollars <clears throat> and it's capable of doing five volts and three volts via this jumper but in, in short all it does is take the a USB connection and provides it out as a serial connection to <clears throat> whatever device you're going to connect it to and I use this to do flashing of the minimum OSD boards and you know the GPS unit that we're going to use today um, it's a simple connection you've got uh, five volts and ground um, they're the red and black connections and then you've got uh, your transmit and your receive now the transmit on this has to go to the receive on your GPS unit uh, so I've got this wired up so that um, the brown wire will go to the receive on the unit so when I plug it in here uh, just make sure I get the orientation uh, the brown wire maps to the green wire and the green wire here is presented to the receive and vice versa so the transmit from GPS unit goes to the receive on this unit via that yellow wire. Okay the first thing that we need to do is go to uh, the ublocks.com website and go to their download section and we need to download the uCenter GNSS evaluation software um, it comes in a couple of flavors. There's a Windows and an Android here, but I'm going to download the Windows one. And current version is 8.13 at the time of doing this recording. So just click on that, 
download it and just install it to your machine and kick it off. Once you kick it off, um, you'll be presented with a application like this. And what we need to do is um, connect the FTDI into this application so we can start talking and um, uploading files. So I've gone ahead and already inserted my FTDI device into um, my laptop. And we need to go to the receiver tab and start with the port configuration. Um, what I did was I actually started this software before plugging in the FTDI so I noted what COM ports were available and I've plugged it in and COM port 8's come up. So what we'll do is we'll select COM port 8 and um, what we've quickly already seen is that a connection status has occurred. So I've got green lights here and I'll also note that uh, the connection status is down here at the bottom and it says COM 8 38400 forward rate. Um, if you haven't got a green connection here, um, the next bit that you need to set is board rate, also under receiver, so 38,400. And the last thing that's handy to do is also set auto boarding um, because it will automatically uh, try to find the board rate for connectivity, uh, which is handy later if you change um, your configuration and it, it changes the board speed. So we've now got the system talking to the software uh, and what we need to do is upload that configuration file. Now the configuration file that um, I have I downloaded from the MultiWii site um, and you can do the same but I'll also provide a link so that um, anyone who's watching this YouTube video can um, just download it from my site and use that as um, the configuration file for their uh, GNSS GPS. Um, to do that what we do is go to Tools um, we go to GNSS configuration, select it, presents us with this window here. Um, all we need to do is select the file, um, in this case it's called uconfig, uh, you can give it whatever name you want. Um, we'll select that for uploading. We need to enable the store configuration into flash, which is the non-volatile memory. And we now need to take the file and upload it to the GPS or the GNSS in this case. What we'll do is we'll select that, kicks open another window, and it sends the file. So we're done in that respect. Um, sent the file. Um, last is we need to go to receiver again, action, and we need to do a save config. So we'll do a save config, and that should have saved that configuration file to the unit itself. That's all it is to doing the update. Um, you know, it's it's not that hard at all. I just wanted to mention that there's some debugging that you can use on this system. Um, so if you go into the view menu, <clears throat> there's um, a configuration view or a message view. Um, the configuration view is quite handy in that you know you can start to drill down into uh, the system itself and start looking at some of the configuration parameters that we've set. Um, the message views a uh, similar thing. Um, we've got some real-time output happening here now because if we look over here um, the system's trying to acquire some satellites. It's not doing very well because I'm inside the house but um, you know we can start drilling down on um, some of the NMEA um, information um, and you know, uh, start working out what's going on. You know, it's got everything from the USB port all the way up to the antenna settings and so forth. So I'll let you just sort of run through, have a look at the view section of it. Um, there are some other good um, outputs as well, such as the packet console. So we'll start to see um, the communication coming in from the receiver itself um, in raw format. And um, you know it's quite useful to uh, look at this sort of stuff to see how it's debugging, uh, or use it as debugging to um, work out what your system's doing. Um, what I'll do is uh, I'll pop outside and we'll see if we can grab some satellites and some real-time output. So I've just jumped outside for a little while. Um, actually, I've only been here for less than a minute, and what you can see already is that um, we're getting a lot of satellite information. 
been shown out here. So at the moment I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten satellites um, acquired by this GPS unit and see data streaming in quite consistently um, over here and the satellite locations in respect to me. Um, and we're starting to get along in lat um, and an altitude out of that and it's getting more accurate as uh, time goes on. So now that that's a good indication that um, the GPS units are working and functioning correctly. So um, I think for now that's probably a good place to wind this video up and um, you know we'll, we'll look at another video where we'll install this into a NACE32 board um, and see how it, uh, it gets all integrated and running. So I hope this was useful and I hope it um, gets more people out and put, strip, put a GPS unit into their um, into their quads. Thanks for watching. Cheers.